Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As Sanjeev said, entrepreneurs are dreamers. All entrepreneurs are dreamers, and so am I. Um, the definition of a dream of an entrepreneur is very, very well brought out by uh, our former president. He said, dream is not what you see in the sleep. It's what prevents you from sleeping. Extremely well put, and that's what keeps us all alive. Um, the other very important feature that you better have if you're an entrepreneur is you've got to be stupid. And um, honestly, you've got to be stupid, and I'm definitely a very stupid person, and you'll know why. Reed Hastings, the CEO and founder of Net Net Netflix, he says that as an entrepreneur, you have to feel like you can jump out of a plane and be confident that you can hang on to a flying bird. You know? So that, that's how stupid you've got to be. Fortunately, one thing you don't require is a lot of money these days. When I started out, you better had money, and I did without money. Uh, what you need today is a lot of passion, a lot of stupidity, and the ability to dream, and dream is a lifetime of dreaming. Now, why did I leave an, a good job in Grindley's Bank? Because one fine day I got an increment which I thought was just too big. Honestly, I said, look, in the next five minutes, I wrote down my resignation letter because I knew that if I'd stayed on, I would never be able to become an entrepreneur. Everything was stupid about it. The timing was stupid because unlike Sanjeev, my wife wasn't working. She had taken time off to, she was pregnant and she, our daughter was born the very next day. It was a stupid business to start in, in India of those days, the knowledge business, because people are very happy to pay for a government license and not for knowledge. And the third stupid thing was about funding. I had all of 7,000 rupees in my bank. There's no access to debt. There were no VCs. And angels were still in heaven. So we started this idea that one should start a market research company, but we'll do it differently. How differently? We'll provide incredible quality. You know, when you're young, you always think you can do incredible things. The incredible quality. The report should be half the size. And the price should be double that of the market leader. And that's the way you create value. Fortunately, a few companies bit the bait and we broke even in the first month. Over the years, uh, we became a strategy consulting company. And last year, we were uh, ranked by Walt as one of the top 10 strategy consultants in Asia and the only Asian company on that list. Now, people ask me, how did that happen? Well, my answer is like that character Toby in Uncle Tom's Cabin. She was asked, when were you born? She said, I was, I was never born. It just happened. So we just happened to become a strategy consultant. But when you think back, I think there's one reason. As a market research company, we hired people from IIMs. It was stupid because everybody else felt, look, for a taxi service, you don't need a, a Rolls Royce. But because we hired IMites, we were able to transition very easily into a strategy consulting company and do learn more and do well as we went along. Today, if I, we are uh, four business entities in the Avalon Group. We are 1,425 professionals. We work out of 11 offices in India, UK, and the US. And we are starting in Singapore next week. The chairman of our company is Girija Pandey, and the CEO Jaldeep is sitting out here. Um, and we serve clients today in 22 countries, and we work for them in 83 countries. So it's been a very interesting journey. And people ask, how did you win? How did you win this war? Look, we followed the doctrine Sun Tzu followed, he said. He said, look, the purpose of war is to win, not to fight. So we decided we're not going to fight anyone. We're just going to go in, out there and win. And they were just based on six pillars. One is client proposition. We said we'll always be a value for com money company. And value we defined as better, cheaper, faster. And I'll talk about it in the next slide. We decided we'll go global even when we're small. Uh, it might look stupid, but actually the whole idea was that if you go global, you'll get much better rates. And the challenges are so, so much different from the challenges you face in India. So you're likely to learn a lot. The other thing we said is we're going to expand along the value chain and not say we're going to be focused on this vertical or that horizontal. 
It didn't matter to us. We, so we said we will be strategy, we will be in market research, we will be in analytics, uh, and big data. And since these are, the success factors in each of these are different, we said we'll manage them separately, different boards, and not mix them up. So it was clearly a horses for courses game. One thing we realized is that if you've got to win against the incumbents, you don't go by and fight. Instead, use technology to the extent you can. Leverage it fully, and that's what we've done. And then, last but not the least, we said, we'll fly under the radar. So we're not interested in fighting, we're interested in winning, so we fly under the radar, and that's what we've done right till today. Now, what do I mean by BC ever better, cheaper, faster? A lot of people believe that you can either just get two of the three right. You can't be better and cheaper and faster. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for you if it, work, it might work for the client. In Avalon Consulting, we said we're going to be focused on high quality and offer it at a cheaper rate than others who offer the same high quality, not be the cheapest in the business. Uh, in Avalon Global Research, we said we'll be better, cheaper, and we'll do some things very fast. Like, we, have, we do studies in one day, we do studies in five days, besides the regular five-week, six-week studies. In Ugum Solutions, we took a different tack. We said we'll be better, cheaper, and faster. So most of the jobs we do, uh, as someone mentioned a, a little while back, we're the world's largest outsourcing company for market research analytics. Most of the global market research companies get the analytics done in India by us. Uh, we turn around our jobs in between one and a half days to three days, mostly two days. Um, and convention has it that it takes 10 days. Probably we didn't know that it should take 10 days, so we do, we'd be doing it in one and a half to three days. Uh, the most in exciting thing is the startup we've got now. It's called Germinate Solutions. There the idea is better, much cheaper, and unbelievably faster. Here we're saying, look, we, we've got solutions for customer satisfaction studies, we've got solutions for customer lead generation, uh, we've got customers, uh, we've got things for customer retention, there are whole, and say, campaign analytics and so on and so forth. Here we say, we are not going out there to collect data about each of this. We are not going to have a whole army of people who are going to analyze it. Instead, we'll build technology to crowdsource all the information required. We'll use technology and artificial intelligence to analyze things, render the charts and graphs, and then only top it up with minimal amount of uh, advisory work. So A to Z, there are no human beings. All the human beings in the company are sitting and developing all kinds of new technologies there. So it's better, cheaper, and much faster. Just to give an example, um, we and another well-known market research company were asked to submit a quotation for um, evaluating a very successful TV campaign of, an, uh, of a telecom operator. Now, before the, the other company was able to submit its proposal, we had already given our report. In all of 10 days, the report went out with 51,000 as a sample. So it is, the whole idea was to be better, che much cheaper, and unbelievably faster. Now, the point is, when we were developing this technology and no one told us it's going to be called big data later, uh, we had we used terabytes of information, we analyze it and render all kinds of things. So that brings me on to the next thing. What's the next wave likely to be? We've seen a lot of talk about big data. It's real. There may be some hype, but it's spawning huge number of entrepreneurs in India and the world over, and you're going to see a lot more in the, in the coming years. People who build on the output of big data analytics. Now, the next question I have is, is there a bit of crapo in you? It's not a spelling mistake. It's crapo is crapo Durant, who is the one who set up a very famous company in the US. He used to manufacture horse carts in 1882. In 2008, he put together, uh, cobbled together a number of companies uh, manufacturing cars to create what we call General Motors today. Now, he believed in horse carts, but he also felt that sooner or later, cars are going to be better, cheaper, and faster. And therefore, he should forget about his horse carts and actually develop a great automobile industry and be part of it. Now, what's going to be the next way for, as far as I'm concerned? You know, the consulting industry is waiting to be 
disrupted. Most of the things we have done is by disrupting the existing status rather than competing with the, uh, fighting the competition. Now, you might say, why would you want to bite the hand that feeds you? It goes against conventional wisdom. I'm saying it's better to chop off that hand and provide something better. So I'm going to try and see whether I can make a lot of you more stupid than I'm me. I am. See, you know, look at a, a, a consulting company. What is it? It has a few brilliant people who have been there, done it, seen all kinds of things. And then they have a huge number of analytical juniors who put together, produce some great solutions for clients. And look at clients. There are some very experienced people, good, uh, brilliant people. But they're not exposed to all kinds of problems, so therefore, problems when they, uh, which they've never been exposed to, they call in consultants. Just think of it. Supposing it's possible to bring 10 companies together who are non-competitive and not in competing areas, and then they're able to exchange their uh, expertise across them, then the amount of work for which they need to go to a consulting firm will reduce. It's possible to do it physically. What if you've got 100 companies? Then it's tougher, but the number of things for which you have to go externally would be outside this group would be less. What if you could get 10,000 companies across the world to uh, non-competing companies to be able to very freely and easily uh, share experiences and ideas together? Then you might find that consulting as we do it, know it now, it will not be required, but a whole new form of consulting would emerge, which will be much bigger than the consulting we have today. The consulting industry, I'm not talking about my company. It will happen if we can create a technology platform, and there's a lot of brilliant people here in this audience who might want to have a shared entrepreneurship. And if we can create that technology platform, and there's some ideas on how to do it, and if you're able to get 10,000 companies together to pool their intellectual and resources and experience, then you might be able to create a completely new world in the, area of, in the field of consulting. And I want to propose to you that if you feel up to it and you feel inspired by Sanjeev who talked before me, then let's get together. Thank you.